Hi everyone, I'm Hao Ling, and today I'm going to present our work on high-performance mobile emulation through graphics projection and the resulting product called Trinity. This is a joint work by Tsinghua University, University of Minnesota, CNIC, and University of Illinois. Well, if you have experiences with mobile application development, mobile emulators should be a very familiar notion. Mobile emulators create full-fledged software phones on your PC or server. They enable app debugging without buying tons of expensive hardware phones and are also widely used in malware detection, PC-based mobile gaming, and novel cloud edge gaming. So what exactly is a mobile emulator? Basically, when you run a mobile emulator, you're looking at an old-fashioned virtual machine. Guess mobile OSs run within these virtual machines just like any other PC server OSs. With, of course, some adaptations for the mobile systems, including those for different architectures and special hardware. But on the other hand, it is something more than a traditional VM. A major difference is that, unlike common headless server OSs, mobile OSs are often UI-centric. Therefore, expecting mobile emulators to have powerful graphics processing capabilities so that the UI can run smoothly particularly in the PC-based and cloud gaming usage cases. Therefore, this capability is a key factor to the performance of mobile emulators. Of course, this capability gap is a major problem to the emulation of any UI-centric systems. So the exploration of solutions can date back to 2002, long before the rise of mobile systems. Well, in the beginning, people realized that the address space isolation between the guest OS and host OS is just like that in the context of RPC. Naturally, they follow general RPC design to build the graphics infrastructure. When a guest app calls a graphics API, it becomes an RPC to the host to invoke host side graphics API and realize rendering with the host GPU. This design is clean and natural and easy to implement, but the problem is also significant. VM axes are frequently utilized to deliver RPC packets to the host. VM axes completely stop the guest from running while it waits for the host to finish execution and give back the execution results. The idle waiting at both sides causes the resulting products to perform poorly on even common apps. To address the problem, instead of sending synchronous API calls to the host, fully async and more capable driver commands are utilized. Such commands resemble those of a real GPU driver, and thus this technique is called device emulation. Device emulation effectively addresses the problem of idle waiting, but unfortunately falls back to sequential execution of the commands in a single rendering thread, as high-level OS abstraction like Threads and Windows are lost during the transition from high-level APIs to low-level driver commands. Well, it's a step forward nonetheless, because it can now smoothly run common apps, but still not those heavy 3D apps like modern games and AR, VR. With the efficiency problem of virtualization-based techniques, researchers propose to break the culprit, the virtualization boundary. The resulting emulator DAO translates a part of essential Linux system calls into Windows ones to run Android apps on Windows. In a similar spirit, it translates apps OpenGL ES calls into desktop OpenGL or Direct3D calls to realize rendering. Well, as promised, it delivers satisfactory efficiency, but the toll is equally high. With the guest host isolation principle being damaged, compatibility and security are greatly sacrificed due to incomplete translation of system calls and shared address spaces. It would seem that we are now facing a dilemma, that is, can mobile emulators simultaneously achieve high efficiency and compatibility? To answer the question, let's go back to the beginning, virtualization. It is not hard to notice that virtualization-based approaches do well in compatibility and security, but poorly in efficiency. And the struggle is mostly due to frequent VM axes for synchronous whole-site executions of API calls. As VM axis, the guess is fully stopped and must wait for the host to finish and get back to the guest. The resulting long path is a nightmare to any system. So we ask, 
Is it possible for the host to process API calls asynchronously, even though they are synchronous by design? So in this work, we make the following contributions. First, we propose a new graphics virtualization method called graphics projection, which decouples guess and whole site graphics processing. Second, we devise elastic flow control and adaptive data teleporting mechanisms for coordinating the decoupled guest side and whole side control and data flows. Based on this, we built Trinity, the first and only mobile emulator to achieve near native efficiency without losing compatibility and security. So before getting into details, let's first take a look at modern graphics APIs with a Hello World example. Here I wish to draw a simple triangle using OpenGL ES, which is the default graphics framework of Android. To do this, firstly, we invoke what we call type 1 APIs to do context setting work and prepare the drawing environment. In this case, it binds a buffer to the context that will be used to store the triangle's vertex coordinates. And next, we call type 2 APIs to populate the graphics buffer with actual coordinate data living in the memory. Finally, we tell the GPU to draw the triangle using type 3 drawing calls and you'll see a triangle lying exactly where you wish it to be on your program's window. The interesting thing about these three types of APIs is that many of them do not immediately involve GPU when they are issued, notably type 1 and type 2 calls. Such context and resource management work usually involves GPU only upon actual drawing. That means they do not need to be synchronously executed at once. As a matter of fact, such calls take up some 94% of all calls in popular 3D apps. What's more, these calls are designed to be fully handle-based. That is, a small integer is used to reference the actual graphics buffer or any other resources in the APIs. And that's a major opportunity for us. Based on these characteristics of graphics APIs, we propose graphics projection, a graphics virtualization method that projects whole site contacts and resources onto the guest address space. In this projection space, we maintain what we call shadow contacts and the resource handles. Here, shadow contacts are a subset of GPU contacts information. In a sense, this projection space caches the effect of type 1 and type 2 calls and thus enables the guest to do graphics API processing. This design decouples host and guest control and data flows when most type 1 and type 2 calls are now processed in the projection space. The cache effects are asynchronously reproduced by the host GPU rather than synchronously. And for type 3 drawing calls, they are async by design. So let's see some real actions of the projection space. Again, we wish to draw a simple triangle. To do this, we first need a graphics buffer to store the triangle's vertex coordinate data. So we call GLGen buffers to generate a graphics buffer. Naturally, we expect this API call to return a handle to the buffer. In response to this, a projected handle is generated in the projection space and returned to us. Meanwhile, you can see that API remoting does nothing but send the RPC packet to the host. In the next time slot, we grab the projected handle and go on to the next logic to bind the buffer handle to the contacts by calling GL bind buffer at the guest. Simultaneously, the projected handle is sent to the host, and we now call the gen buffer API at the host to generate an actual host handle and establish a mapping between the projected handle and the host handle. But take a look at the API remoting, and you'll find that at the guest side, it falls into idle waiting due to VM access and synchronous execution of the API at the host, while we make full use of the time slots. And in the following step, we call bind buffer at the host to bind to the actual buffer while the guest begins to populate the buffer. The host side buffer binding is done by extracting the host handle from the map using the projected handle. And then we draw the triangle with the drawing call. Finally, when our triangle finishes drawing at the host, API remoting is still two time slots from over. To give you a more quantitative sense about the effectiveness of the projection space, our measurement on popular 3D apps shows that almost all API calls 
no longer need synchronous whole-site executions, while the number is only 41.4% for API remoting. In fact, 26% calls are directly resolved without going to the host at all. And all this take up no more than one megabyte of memory in practice. While the notion of projection space sounds pretty nice, I hope, it cannot be done without careful coordination of guest and host control and data flows. In fact, now that the guest host control flows are decoupled, the guest executions are very lightweight and much faster than the host actual rendering. As a result, the guest execution is very fast at first, but gradually, when the host rendering cannot match the guest execution speed, the guest is blocked to wait for the host rendering. Therefore, the frame rendering time is short at first, but then becomes very long. We call this phenomenon control flow oscillation. This could lead to unsmooth animations. For example, you may see a character suddenly moves a very long distance in a frame due to the long blocking period. Because the app uses the previous frame's rendering time to determine how long the character should have moved in the next frame. To address this, we adapt the MIMD algorithm from networking to align guest and host executions at frame granularity. This algorithm ensures fast conversion of two network flows by multiplicatively adjusting two flow speeds. In a similar spirit, we also multiplicatively adjust guest sleep time after a frame is rendered so that guest frame rendering time is aligned with host rendering time. The data flow delivery from the guest to the host is another tricky part, where high system dynamics like CPU and memory performance and data dynamics like bursty data can dramatically affect data delivery speed. For example, a popular 3D apps can generate up to one gigabyte graphics data per second, but the data generation rate is less than one megabyte per second in most cases. We identify around 16 dynamic patterns, and unfortunately, there is no single strategy that can fit all dynamic situations. In fact, different strategies usually make opposing trade-offs in a particular situation. Here's the example. At the guest user space, we can either buffer an API call data with other data for batching, or directly write it to the kernel. The first involves a mem copy, while the second involves a user kernel switch. With a large data or low available memory bandwidth, you may find that the mem copy introduces longer delay than user kernel switch. But with a smaller data, the situation may be exactly the opposite. Our idea is to sample in situ system and data status, such as mem copy speed and system call delay to estimate each strategy's delay and select the best suited one. We call this method data teleporting because hopefully it can always pick the shortest path to deliver the data. Putting everything together, we get a high performance Android emulator called Trinity. Trinity is built atop Cameo and runs Android x86. The Android system graphics library is replaced with ours where most of the projection space and flow control mechanisms are realized. While in the guest kernel, our virtual device driver is responsible for adaptive data delivery. We evaluate Trinity's performance using both standard benchmarks and real apps. Standard benchmarks are used to test the extreme performance of our emulator, while real apps are used to evaluating both the efficiency and compatibility. On standard benchmark, Trinity shows an average of 93.3% native hardware performance, and sometimes even better performance than the native benchmarks. Because our special graphics memory pool mechanism that fully exploits GPU's DMA engines, this efficiency also substantially outperforms other mainstream emulators. For top 100 3D apps, Trinity shows best efficiency in 76 apps, while showing no perceivable difference for the other 24 apps, the Trinity doesn't show the best efficiency compared to the other emulators. In fact, for the 100 test apps, Trinity can smoothly run all of them. We also randomly select 10,000 apps for compatibility tests. The result is also promising with 97.2% apps showing no crash with random input. The other apps either actively evade emulators 
or require special hardware that Trinity doesn't support yet, or crash on real devices as well. Currently, we implement Trinity for both Windows and Mac OS hosts, and provide full OpenGL ES and ARM support. Trinity's performance was also recognized by Huawei at Echo Studio, an Android IDE with millions of developers. They are now gradually replacing its originally used emulator, Google Android Emulator, with Trinity. Well, to conclude, in this work, we propose a graphics virtualization method called graphics projection, as well as elastic flow control and adaptive data teleporting mechanisms for maximizing the performance. Based on this, we built Trinity, the first mobile emulator that can smoothly run heavy 3D apps without losing compatibility or security. Trinity is now open source and ready to be used. You are welcome to check out and try our artifact here. Thank you.